Okay, so now we're going to count in base 5 with some coins that you're fairly familiar with, and let's just see what happens here. Um, this is exchanging very much like with the base 5 yellow pieces that are in your manipulative kit. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and then when we put down our fifth penny, if we're counting in base 5, we're not allowed to have five of anything in one place value box. What do we do when we get five for coins, you think? Well, we would exchange them. Mm -hmm. What would we exchange our five pennies for? A nickel. A nickel. Okay. So these five pennies are now gone. We don't need pennies anymore. We can just carry around a nickel. It's right. much more efficient. Okay. So we have one zero or your placeholder from before. One zero base five is represented with a nickel or uh, one of those um, long pieces in, or the flat, in, in the, base what five was, the base five kit. Thank you. Words are escaping me. Okay, so we have one zero, one one, one two, one three, one four. There is no one five. Again, what do we do? Exchange. Exchange or trade in is another way to say it. We're going to trade in those five pennies for one nickel, and this represents two zero base five. Awesome. So from two zero we're going to go two one, two two, two three, two four. Three zero? Three zero. Change. So let's make another trade. Get rid of that. Put in that. So three zero. And then we're going to go three one, three two, three three, three four. Four zero? Four zero because we don't again need to carry around these pennies when we can trade it in for a nickel. So we've got four zero, four one, four two, four three, four four. Well, I say five trade in, zero. but we can't do that right because now we have this group of five. Okay. Let's make it look like a group of five. So what do we do now? Well, with the pennies we exchanged. So right, we took five pennies and like traded them in for a nickel. So what are we going to do with the five nickels? I feel like we should trade them again, again for mm -hmm. a quarter. Yep. So we can exchange these five nickels. There's a game called Banker Banker the Kids Play that helps them with this for that quarter. So rather than having 25 pennies, we took every group of five pennies, traded it in for a nickel, and then that we did that five times. Then once we got five nickels, we traded it in for a quarter. And this is awesome. And then we would keep going. Here we would have one quarter, zero nickels, one penny. So one, zero, one, one, zero, two, one, zero, three, one, zero, four, one, zero, five. Oop, oop, no, we can't do one, zero, five in base five. We would have to do that, right? Yes. And that would be one, one, zero. So again, the place value feeling really weird. We could keep going up. What would we have to do if we had this? Okay, let me think. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So right now we have five groups of 25, and that would be five zero zero, but we can't have a five in any box. So can we exchange this again? Yes. Okay. And there is no coin in our actual counting system, so, so we have a make-believe one. We're going to exchange these five 25s for one 25, and then we will have in... Base five. Base five. This is actually a one, zero, 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 which does look like a thousand, but it's not a thousand. It's actually, and some people like to put this there instead, it's a one, zero, 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 because we have one, one, twenty-five, zero quarters, zero nickels, and zero pennies. Got it. So hopefully that'll help you see one of the different ways that you can count with exchanging. This Karen, is just like the base five pieces, except that it's money. Karen, can I do something really quick? Sure. Okay. So I remember when I was taking this class, you and Joanna were like the meanest professors ever, and you never gave us this chart for the test. Okay. So you so, want to take it away? Yeah. Do you mind if I go ahead and no. draw the go chart ahead. for everyone to see? Let's draw the chart. Go ahead. Show everybody okay, so what you did when you took your tests. Whenever I took my test, because it was just really hard for me to visualize, 
I went ahead and I would just draw my chart. And for some reason, I can't count up. So I always start over here. So I have my 125s and a line, my 25s and a line, my 5s and a line, and my 1s. And so whenever I took my test, I actually got out my manipulatives and put them where they went. And it makes everything amazing and glorious. And it's your own little private way of cheating the system. <laughs> That's really cool. And one of the things that I'd like everybody to remember is where these come from. And Ariel starts from the biggest one she knows she's probably going to get. Um, and what you do with any place value system like this is that you go up by powers of the number. So this is 5 to the 0. This is 5 to the first power. This is 5 to the second power. 5 times 5 is 25. This is 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 again is 120. Okay, so now we've written the, the base 5 place value chart. If you needed to answer some questions, say in base 3 or something, you could use this same technique. Base 3 place value chart place values. Okay, so for base, base 3 place values, you would start with 3 to the 0, go to 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, and 3 to the 3. So we could do, this would be 1, because anything with the 0 power is 1. This would be our 3's place value. This would be our 9, and this would be our 27. And we can go past that, but neither one of us has the patience for that right now. So you can build any place value chart just by doing the powers of what base you're using. I hope that helps you all think about how to deal with counting in these different base systems and be ready for all the different counting and, and adding we're going to do in the future. Great!